they, they, this is a spirit. This is a spirit of the Antichrist. This is a spirit that can get on any of us if we turn to sin, if we turn to envy. If we don't have our own personal relationship with the Lord that is vibrant, that is robust, that is living, that is uh, a daily thing. Very serious warning, I believe, for all of us, especially us who are in evangelism uh, ministry, ministering in evangelism and are sharing our faith. We're like Jesus, right? We're where we're out there, you know, on the move, you know, praying for people, uh, uh, tr- uh, you know, trying to get them healed, trying to get them saved, trying to get them delivered. Right. This is this is the ministry that we're, we're supposed to be a uh, part of. Right. And, and if you're not, by the way, on a side note, you know, get involved. Right. Get 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 started. You got to start somewhere. Just start by lifting up the name of Jesus to your coworkers, your friends, your family. But for us who are already, you know, uh, 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 been, do, been doing the work of an evangelist for a long time now, this is what we're going to face right here. What, what, what I'm talking about today, <clears throat> because all those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. Make no mistake about it. Jesus said, it's going to happen. There is a redeemer. Jesus, God's own son. Because that way we can be partakers of Christ's suffering. So we can also partake of his glory. Hopefully you love that. Hopefully you say, hey, man, hey, whatever it takes for me to partake of the glory of God. If I got to go through the cross myself, amen, right? But <clears throat> but before we get to that, I, I, that part of this, you know, I want to make sure I drive this point home. That that if you if you don't have your own personal vibrant, living relationship with the Lord, I dare say you will fall into the trap of the Pharisees. It's kind of like the default. You know, when you read scripture, you you know, you you see these in in the word that uh, there really is no like middle ground when it comes to um, what spirit you end up being under. Like Romans 8, it says that um, it says if we want to be spiritually minded, it says is to be life and peace, but to be carnally minded is death, right? For the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So you see these scriptures like <clears throat> Romans 8, the one I just quoted you, or, or Galatians 5, where it says, you know, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, right? So those who, who are in the flesh uh, cannot do the things that they wish, right? So we see only these one of these two categories, either in the flesh, you're, you got a carnal mind, it's enmity against God, like the Pharisees, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the lawyers would have been the epitome of that. They would have been like the, the, the max of that, of what that looks like. Here's what it looks like. It looks like a hypocrite. It looks like a guy that goes to church. It looks like a guy that knows the Bible, right? That is twisting the word of God to his own destruction, right? Like we see is happening so prevalently today. But I want to really send you a warning here to be careful not to let that spirit get on you. And the only way that that I've found that it's not going to get on us is to spend that time with the Lord alone. I mean, look at Jesus being the ultimate pattern of this. I mean, it says that he was constantly going away off into the wilderness, praying all night, (laughs) right? He's fasting 40 days. He's doing all these things. He's constantly doing the work of an evangelist. He's constantly humbling himself. He's washing his disciples' feet to leave us an example how we should walk in his steps, right? He's, 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 he's a man of sorrows. He's a man of grief. He's a man on a mission. And, and he's a man of servitude and sacrifice. And, and so are the apostles, the prophets. Uh, they're, they're, they're persecuted. They're, like I said earlier, they're called the filth and the offscoring of all things. They're the, 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 they're the the burn of the joke, you know what I mean? They're, they're the cast outs. So, so, so we got to constantly be, be, be looking at, are we spending time with the Lord to, to make sure that our heart's in that place, in that place where, where, where it's about him, it's about serving him, doing it for his glory, glory for his cause, where we're not doing it. Because Jesus said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. You know what I mean? These things that we talk, that the Lord said to us are the keys to the kingdom. They're the keys to our success. Because if we don't do these things, folks, what makes us think that we're not going to end up like the Pharisees? We're fooling ourselves. If we think that if we don't do what the Lord said that we need to do, that we must do, that we're not going to end up assailing the other Christians vehemently trying to 
lie in wait for them, to catch them in their words. You see, that's a spirit that gets on us, the spirit of envy. When you don't go get your own testimony, when you don't go and spend time with the Lord, doing the things that God's called you to do, you know, Jesus said the kingdom of God is like going to do a treasure that a man that a man found and he went and hid it in the field and sold all that he had to buy that field. When we don't do that to get our own treasure, our own treasure chest, you know what I mean? An abundance for every good work. You know what ends up happening is that we look at somebody else who, who is, you know what I mean? We look at, we see somebody else that's, that's near us in our life that is getting that treasure. They are getting those breakthroughs. They are soaring high, you, you, you know, above all the sin in the world and they're 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 getting victory in their christian walk they have an anointing that is from the lord they have a joy they have a peace they have you know oh they they got so many blessings you know they got favor with god and men you know we see that when we when we don't go get our own treasure we don't get our own blessing from god and what do we do well we do we end up like what the pharisees did they they they, they, we envy them we we start envying them and you, you know misery does love company man it does you, you know it says they're enticing unstable souls so we want to entice our neighbor we want to pull that guy down because in doing so in the pharisees trying to pull jesus down trying to condemn him it made they would have made them look better <laughs> that's a scary thing isn't it that if we fall into this spirit that, that I'm talking about right now, that we're reading about right here in Luke 11, verses 52 to 54, that we will end up trying to drag down the guy next to us who is excelling, who is getting the blessing. I mean, that's last, the last thing we want to be found doing, right? Because now, not only are, are we not getting it, but we're causing somebody else to stumble. We're, we're trying to make the, the, the godly man stumble. Folks, this is, this is how it works in the spirit. That's what the Bible talks about. It says that uh, they, through great swelling words, it says they allure the ones who have actually escaped those who live in error. They promise them liberty. They themselves are slaves of corruption, Peter said in, in, in 2 Peter 2. Be and help them.